Welcome back, my CEO tribe, ladies and gentlemen tribe. We know there's some guys that listen to this, but today I have a super, super special guest for you. Um, the lessons that she's going to talk about today are going to completely blow your mind. And I met my friend, Megan DiMartino. She, okay, here's the true story. Megan heard me running my mouth over on Clubhouse and she's like, oh, I think Jessica would be fun to interview. So she interviewed me and I'm like, wait, what? Like I wanted to ask her so many questions. And then I was like, all right, we got to do like a podcast exchange because I have so much I want to ask you. So there are three main things I've asked Megan to talk about, you go read the bio, do all that. Right. But long story short, Megan is a icon. She is an icon, has been an icon for 30 years in the skincare industry. And you, all right, Megan, say hi to everybody. Hello. Hello. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> so good to be here. I can just keep going on and on. Right. But they're not, they don't come here to listen to me. Um, so you, you basically shook up the skincare industry. I'm fascinated. I can't stop thinking about it. Tell me how all that came about. Well, you know, I, you and I, as you just shared, you know, had an opportunity to meet and we're kindred spirits and, and kindred spirits in so many ways, too short of a time to go into all of that, but it is about helping others. So my heart has always been in that place. But just a brief little, and it's not in the bio, but I'm a New York girl, deep in the heart of Texas now. And what I mean by that is that I lived, I grew up outside of New York City on Long Island, and my parents loved the city. They didn't have a lot of money, so we just combed the streets, went into the museums, and that type of thing. So that was my DNA for creativity. So I always knew from a very young age that I was going to create something. Now, what does that really mean? I don't know create a cake, you know, in your kitchen, a great meal. I didn't, you know, I didn't know, but I knew that I was going to create something. So you, you can read my bio and my little book and all that, but bottom line answering your question is that my father was a uh, entrepreneur himself. <clears throat> my grandfather, DiMartino was an Italian immigrant and he was a barber when he came to the United States. He came at 16. Wow. So my father you know, grew up in that salon spa-ish because barbering became somewhat obsolete. They had moved to Long Island, uh, my, you know, my grandfather and my grandmother and my, his brothers. And so they worked in the shop as it was called. And so after the war, my father got a job with a large paper company. And uh, one of the products he sold was wet strength tissue for underbedding. Say that five times straight. <laughs> but, but he, Ray DiMartino, my dad, was a very creative guy, just like my grandfather was. And so he looked at that tissue, Jessica, and said, I bet this would work for perming. Because back in the day, when he worked in the shop, my grandfather then converted the barber shop to half barbering, half salonish, because oh. he loved doing ladies' hair. Okay? Sure. okay. So he did perming. And back in the day, they used cloth to wrap the ends. So if okay. you've never had a perm, ladies and gentlemen, you know that they use end wraps. Well, Ray saw this tissue and said, I bet that would work for perming. So he took this tissue, Jessica, and cut it up and brought it to salons in the New York City area and said, try this. By this point, they were using a mesh, a non-woven material, but disgustingly reused it. So very- Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay. You're- Dad. My dad invented tissue yeah. and papers. Oh my gosh. See, I have Shut to share the front that, door. I have Guys, to share that I didn't story. even know this. I did not even know this. Dad. I love it. This is crazy. But I have to uh, not only honor my dad, but I have to share it because I can't just jump into, well, I, duh, 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 because if I didn't have, and I want our guests to own this because it's that evolution, you see? And that's one of the things that we have that bond with, you and I. So anyhow, us children, Jessica, we're packing end papers in our basement. 
I was fine. It was your own, it was your own um, assembly yes. line in the exactly. basement manufacturing. <laughs> exactly. So I'm not going to then go on to his story, but the yeah. essence was I was brought up by Ray DiMartino. Okay. And so I, my mom said to me, uh, maybe, you know, in the early 2000s, I was having dinner with both my parents alone because I'm one of four children. And she said, you know, Ray, she's more like you than any of our children. And what a great compliment. Yeah. But in the, my early career, I worked in the fashion industry in New York. I went to college for fashion merchandising for a brief time, then got married, had a child. And my fashion designing dream went up in smoke, but I never lost the dream of creating. So fast forward, I uh, was a Tupperware manager uh, to get the car and the money and uh, save for a car. And then I became a single mother. And, um, and that's when my father, I was working in Manhattan again, but I had two children now and it was very difficult. I was in sales, in advertising and I loved it, but it was very difficult. So then I, uh, my father kept saying, Meg, come and join us. I have a project. I want to add products to the beauty division. And what that meant, Jessica, is that uh, for all those years, all those years from the 50s on, he developed other products in, uh, he was a converter, meaning he didn't own his own trees, so to speak, like a, yeah, uh, you know, sure. Kimberly Clark. So uh, Darby Dental, the bite wing tab for dental, he creates those to this moment and things of that nature. So the NRAPs were private label for the distributor. So it would say Armstrong McCall or Sally Beauty, you know, it wouldn't say Rayson, Ray and my brother, Michael. So, um, he wanted to add products to the beauty division. So he said, come and join us. Well, that come was not easy because I had to move from Connecticut to the Eastern end of Long Island. But I realized that as a single mother, it was probably the wisest thing I could do for my children, but also from the standpoint is he gave me an MBA in sales and marketing. Now I had a sales background, but he really gave me the opportunity. And this goes into the skincare now. Um, I was able to do R&D, meaning go into salons and ask, what do you need? In reference to paper, it had to be paper. And uh, acrylic nails were beginning. So we developed a toweling that is still sold for Sal through Sally Beauty. So because when you have a set of acrylics, I'm sure most people have over their lives, right? you know, they build that base, even gels now, and they're wiping that brush. And they were using initially terry towels, the waffle cotton towels, and the stuff hardens, right? On oh, your nails. Yes. Yeah. And it was ruining those towels. So I went back to Ray and said, okay, let's try some toweling. So anyhow, we put that together. So I was able to do market research, R&D, product, product development, packaging, then take it to market and sell it. And so from there, I built other products for my, uh, the, my father's company. Mm -hmm. And so I knew I was never going to stay there forever because remember what Meg said in her head, Megan DiMartino said when she was a little person, I'm going to create something. So <clears throat> no offense, dad, but paper was not doing it for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> but as I said, no offense, but also my dad was retiring. He's now in his eighties and, you know, it just, he was my guy. You know, I, we would sorts together, even though my brother was involved, he, Ray was my guy. Mm -hmm. So he was my mentor, truly one of my greatest mentors. And so um, when, so here I'm doing all these trade shows and developing a name for myself. And all of a sudden one company approached me and it was Alcon Laboratories. Fort Worth, Texas. And Alcon is a publicly traded company. So if you wear contacts, most people know Alcon. But they manufacture products in their division of manufacturing uh, for ophthalmologists and dermatologists and dermatology. So I felt it was a great opportunity to interface, because remember, there was no internet, there was no Google, there were no websites. So very different dynamic of creating. So I basically, Went, moved to Fort Worth, Texas. That's why I say this New York girl deep in the heart of Texas. And so I moved and I was able to interface with very sophisticated chemists while working on, you know, what I, my job was. And they had bought a hairline, uh, a pharmaceutical company like a Rogaine or a Nioxin, 
nothing very glamorous. So they wanted to add products to this. So I was able to learn. Now it was hair care, but still I was able to learn about product development. So now I'm bringing you to the um, late 80s, okay? All right. I'm so fascinated how everything always leads to something it does. else. It does, it does. Oh, it does. always leads to something else. That's why these, these conversations like yours, you and I, and when you were with me, it helps people to see that you just don't come out and say, because I'm asked all the time, how did you know how to do this? You know, it, it started at five packing in papers, yep. but you know, and then that DNA from my dad, that observing and learning and, you know, so uh, basically the, 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 that moment in time, and we all have them, um, uh, the, I had a job, you know, doing my work and we were working on a new hair care line called Halluron. This is a very interesting point because hyaluronic acid is the tour de force in skincare products today. It's a very uh, hydrating ingredient. Okay. Yep, yep. Yep. Okay. Very hydrating. It holds a thousand times its weight in water. Hyaluronic, so right? Hyaluronic, H Y. Yes. Okay. So it's in everything today. But guess what? Alcon, because they manufacture products for eye surgery, they had been working with hyaluronic acid 40 years ago. Okay. So we created this hairline with a whole storyboard on hyaluronic acid. And this was in 1989 going into 90. It was called Hyaluron. And so I then remember Megan wanting to create mm -hmm. and thinking by this point, it, it was going to definitely be skincare because I could see the evolution in the salon industry. Spa had not happened at all. Had not happened at all. Okay, wait, we got to stop for a minute yep, because- yep. At one point, it was your job, R&D, research and development. It was your job to go into these salons. Okay, and so what Megan is saying is salons, hair, nails, that all happened. What, But what did not even exist yet are what we know as spas, like exactly. with your facials and your massages and your exfoliating. That industry didn't even exist. And she sees this chemical that holds a thousand times moisture, whatever that were you that was being used for hair. And she said, "Hey, wait a minute." Exactly. And that, I'm so glad you you know pivoted back to reiterate that because it's a concept, and this is a very important point which you're making because people think I said earlier when I uh, knew I was going to do a skincare line. Okay, and not, that's why I took the job with Alcon. But there were no such thing as salon selling skincare. Yeah. It was just Elizabeth Arden and, you know, Georgette Klinger, meaning big fancy resorts and things like that. Yeah. But I could see when the nail thing happened, it's a very important point, when the nail acrylic world started happening, the Asian mm -hmm. thing had not happened yet. Okay. Okay. I'm talking about the early 80s. Okay. Hadn't happened yet. But you could see what was happening in salons and they started calling themselves full service salons. But skincare still had not happened. Because Spa it was the hair and the nails. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. But I could see it. And also I'm smack personally, smack dab in the middle of the baby boomer generation. And so I knew what I was interested, you know, for myself. Okay. Meaning result oriented, like, hey guys, because product, skincare products, up to this point, but very heavy, very European-ish, you know, emollient-ish, not result-oriented-ish. So back to what you were saying, you know, just heavy, you know. So um, basically doing that hair care line, I did a storyboard for my boss. I did. And I it love that we're talking about storyboards. <laughs> and I did this whole storyboard based on skincare and Jessica and company, guess what this man said? No, Megan, I don't see it. Hair doesn't sell. Wow. Now I had a child in college, so I didn't quit my job that day. But, but I Not said that day. I don't think that's gonna work here. Okay. So okay. Hey, from that okay. point on, I did my job, job, and I then started doing research. And because I was inside a publicly traded company, I was privy to a lot of proprietary information. 
And so I not only hyaluronic acid, but also glycolic acid, alpha hydroxy fruit acids. They are really what revolutionized skincare. So that's a long story to get to your uh, question, but it's important because I want people to see that I just didn't do it right. because that's the other thing today. It's that immediate gratification and people just are not doing the work and they think they can just jump off the truck and jump out and do it. And you have to have some base and some foundation and some knowledge, maybe not as much as I did because the world is sped up, you know, exponentially, but and there's so much information out there. But I left uh, Alcon after I discovered glycolic. But even while I was there, I started researching it and found a lab that was now making uh, products in it and contacted them. And they uh, manufactured my first brand, Glycolic. And when I launched Glycolic, guys, it was in the summer of 92. I left my job in the latter part of 91. And I did some consulting projects to pay my bills, but I put together Glycolic and it was um, revolutionary, as you said earlier. It spa still hadn't happened yet. This is 92. All right. but, but it was a simple, safe, synergistic, little line, three-step system. And I went back to the distributors that I had worked with, with my family's business. So a power of association, went okay. to the distributors that carried you know, the um, Alcon line, which were pretty much the same distributors, the A distributors in the industry and said, hi, I'm here, you know, hired manufacturers reps. They said yes to me because they knew me, they knew my work ethic and um, it shot off like a rocket. Not, I, it could have been hair. I mean, it was the way it was packaged, the way it was put together. But on the flip of it, the reason why it shot off like a rocket is because it worked. You so created the, uh, the three. You created the three-step face care system. That's I did. what I just heard. You I did, created. I did. I did. I did. I did. And, okay. Yes. Another pin here yes. that I want to go back to is, and our similarity. We had an idea. We had something we wanted to do, but we didn't, in some big dramatic fashion, um, quit our jobs and burn the bridges. And it's life or death. It's all in. It's go big, go home. No, it's smart, calculated moves so that your family is taken care of, so that your bills are taken care of. Because when people want to burn those bridges, I believe they also burn <clears throat> burn their creativity. Yes, they very so much you so. Yes, continue to to be um, uh, to do what you need to do to pay the bills, to build the savings, to build the dream. Yes, and then and then even after you left the corporate job, you still had other things to bring money in. And you didn't put yourself in a desperate situation. No, it's funny. I don't share this often with people because it's not relevant. But during that season, what you just said, when I, from 91 to 92, guess what I also did? Scott Simon should, should know this. I sold Jaguars. You did what you had to do. I did. Yes. It was down the street from my home. And I said, you know, I, I think I want to see if I can do that anyway. But uh, I did what I had to do. Yes. So yes, I did create the three-step system, which is, is, you know, the tour de force in skincare because the consumer wants easy. The consumer wants results and they want affordability. And so I have put that together. But, but what you asked also is that I remember there were no spas. And so what I did was I ingratiated myself again, back to power of association to the distributor who were like shocked at the volume that was being sold. And I said, okay, guys, we now have to do classes. Oh, okay. Now that we're used to doing hair classes and nail classes, I said, we need to do classes. So it's the salons, the hair and nail salons that are buying. Exactly. Okay. Yes. They're now offering this brand new product yes. in their salons. Yes. And it's, it's like a package that people buy and just take home with them. That's correct. Okay. Right. But there were no estheticians. Most states, an esthetician is the term for a skincare specialist. Yes. Mm -hmm. So most states, I would almost say all, but California and New York did not have separate licensing for aesthetics, did not. Okay. And so I had to go into the salon, but do these trade shows for the distributors as well as classes okay. to uh, educate the salon owner, the manager, or the stylist, how to do skincare. 
So I single-handedly educated the industry. Yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Um, and then what? Well, basically, um, I was undercapitalized like most, uh, you know, entrepreneurs. As a matter of fact, my dad called me when I was putting together Glycolic, uh, and he said, don't do this. He said, you're very talented. Come back at a job with, you know, Estee Lauder, but don't do this. And he was saying that from the standpoint of being dad, yeah. not an entrepreneur. Yeah. And he knew how difficult it was for himself. And so that, but I said, dad, I cannot, I have to do this. So um, I, you know, and back in the day, there were, you know, I was a single woman, no rich husband. Um, and so it was very difficult to finance this. And so I did everything in a possible factoring all the invoices and the like. And it was a struggle, no doubt. I'm not going to candy coat it. I mean, it was fabulous, 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 great fun, tremendously creative, but it also the business side was not easy. And so the lab that manufactured the products had tried to get into this industry, but it was at that time, very small, very networked, kind of good old boy networking. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they, they had tried and failed miserably because they didn't have the connections. Remember, power of association. Right. Right. So they, ke they kept asking me, would you like to sell us this? They saw it as an opportunity to get into it. And I, for a long time, said no. And then I thought it through and I talked to a business advisor and I said, what if I sold it? And ran it contractually for them because that's what they put on the table okay. and then started anew. And they said, yeah, I think that's not a bad idea. So that's in fact what I did. So, so you helped formulate it. You helped create, you helped formulate the product. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you helped <clears throat> create the market. <clears throat> so the lab was creating it. Manufacturing it. Yes. I'm yes. sorry. Yes. The lab yeah. was manufacturing it. <clears throat> you were overseeing the packaging and all of that. Right. The distributor was getting it like on the yeah. trucks to the people who the orders, but right. you were still getting the orders. You had the relationship, you were getting the orders. Right, right. And, and I own one very important piece to what you're kind of doing a deep dive here is that I actually own the formula. Okay, okay. you own the formula. I cool. actually and they're did. saying, they're saying you've created this, this basket that oh. has the formula, that has the name recognition, that has the distribution channels, that has That's the it. customers. That's you it. Right there. The basket, we want to buy your basket. Correct. That is what, that's exactly you right. You had to decide mm -hmm. if you wanted to walk away from your basket. From my baby basket. Yes. Why, why would you walk away from your baby basket? Because as I said, um, well, I'm going to be totally transparent. There was another factor. Remember, I said it was a struggle. And I had, and, and actually, our colleague Scott Simons did a, a clubhouse room with someone about this today. I sold too much equity to a party to keep it afloat. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, I did. I did. And okay, so, interesting. all right, business lessons, yeah. business yes, lessons. Very much so. Hey. Very much so, Jessica. And so, when the lab came a calling, um, I, it, I really had to share their interest with the board, you know, and so they were like, yeah, I think that would be wise. So as I said earlier, I consulted with somebody on my behalf, not them, hmm. but they felt, yeah, that would be, you know, a way of getting rid of them. A fresh start. A fresh start. You took all the lessons, you yes. took all the relationships, you took all of the knowledge, just incredible knowledge, and yes. it was your opportunity to walk away from the headaches and right. then design how you wanted to do it the second time. Exactly, awesome. exactly. Okay. And so, and, and so I did run it contractually for them, okay. and, uh, but I was putting my own structure together. And the uh, gentleman that was the biochemist who worked for them, who initially put uh, my chemist who put glycolic together by this point had started his own business. Uh, and so no when I, yeah. And so when I started a new, uh, I went, obviously went with him and I've been with him ever since, okay. ever since. And so, so he, be he became your chemist, your guy yes, to mix the yes, formula. Okay. Yes. Cool. Yes. And so in 1997, I launched my second brand glycolic, glycolic, uh, uh, Novita Spa my second brand. And Novita means new birth, new life, always something new. 
Novita. That's my promise. Wow. And so I say thought, it again for me. Say it again. Novita. Most people say Novita. I say, I don't care what you call it or how you call it. Just call us. That's right. Right. I don't care. But it means in Italian, new birth, new life, always something new. Wow. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. that. Okay. And very appropriate, really more appropriate for skincare than glycolique was. Glycolique hung its hat on this revolutionary skincare uh, ingredient, you know, alpha hydroxy glycolic acid. So to grow and to scale and to sustain, uh, Novita was a much better brand than uh, glycolique. You, they made it about an acid. You made it about a lifestyle. Exactly. Yes. Ah, yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the lifestyle again is about results and value, yeah. but it is about a lifestyle. Yes. I say that uh, people will say, well, what are, who are these products for? And I say, well, anyone from eight to 108 who has skin. Okay. So men, women, prepubescent, anyone simple, safe system. Okay. So they, they kept with the, and again, I, one of the things that I geek out on is I study businesses and how things are done. Mm -hmm. And then you and I say, what can we learn from that? How can we yes. apply that? So you sold the business that was doing distribution through the salons mm -hmm. and you went on and created. So it was here, go home and do this. Mm -hmm. And I, and then what you're jumping into is let me create an experience. Exactly. They and were after results, which is great, but you're like, let's create an experience with results. Yes. And the other piece to those words that you just said was by, now remember, this is now 97. Okay. okay? okay. And in 95 ish in that area, medical started happening i.e. Botox, fillers, okay. but All initially right. Botox, okay? Okay, more awareness, uh-huh. Okay, and also, I mean, a timeline, and also um, the laser beginnings, just the beginning, beginning of it with laser hair removal started happening, and also uh, microdermabrasion machines came in from Italy. People don't know that, but the original microdermabrasion units, it, it, Italian um, aesthetics is very progressive. Mm. So with that, because I was out there with a kind of a result-oriented medical grade, if you want to use, I used the word pharmaceutical grade in the day, but people, companies, manufacturing companies of laser equipment would call me and say, would you come to this conference where uh, like sales guys? And we could come and bring your product so you can cleanse somebody's face, you know. So I started going to these conferences and interfacing with docs. And so when I started Novita, I, it, I absolutely did go back to some distributors that I had very strong relationships with and who were pivotal. Uh, but I kind of culled it down. And also, guess what, Jessica? I have a URL since 1998. No, you did not. Okay, for those of you that don't know what URL is, it's a website. Right. Since 1998? Any web guy, let's say a young guy or gal, and they'll look at that, 98, oh my God. So, uh, because- like I was I, the first, I was the first website. You know, I mean, so, <laughs> and that, it's a long story, even how that happened, but it's pointless. But, but the point is that I was able to start shifting the way of doing marketing, you see? So I started selling through the distributors, yes, okay. but also directly to salons and spas. Because by this point, there were some spas out there and um, they were now beginning to have national conferences like the uh, large one in Las Vegas, the Inter International Congress of Aesthetics. And so I began to speak and do keynote speaking because I was out there, you know? And so um, I, when you do your own show or not your own show, but you have a booth or booths in these larger shows, you're not there for the distributor. So I was able to start building database, database, database. So I started then selling, I had my own warehouse in Fort Worth, product manufacturing in Dallas, shipped over to Fort Worth to my warehouse. And, you know, we just started shipping all over and really exporting as well. So uh, Novita took on a different dynamic. 
And so it's, and that's the structure of what it is today. You know, more, so not selling through the distributors, but selling directly through salons, spas, medical spas. And in uh, 2004, we put our first shopping cart on the website, could have been three, but in that area. Yeah. And so, you know, you know, online before people even knew what online sales were, and we uh, do a, a, quite a bit of business through that. All right. So in 2000, late 2003 through 2004, somewhere around there, that's when you started doing Novita direct to consumer, not through a spa. That is correct. Or not, you know, not through yeah, a salon. Right, right. Yes, wow. exactly, exactly. And at that same time, <clears throat> I thought I was going to do a spa, which I looked at it more of an education center okay. and um, in Fort Worth, Texas. But God had a different plan. Okay. And that's why I'm in the Austin area. And that's a personal story. And it's a long story. But but the piece I will share, which I know your uh, guests will appreciate, and this is very applicable to today. I knew not one human being in Georgetown, Texas. Yeah. And, but it was taking care of my ex-in-laws who were, my mother-in-law was one of my other mentors, my dad and, and Rose Fiorello. And she was in the middle to latter stages of Alzheimer's and they needed help. So they moved here because my, one of my daughters lived in Austin. Yeah. So it was not uh, as much about my daughter. I mean, it was, but we felt that Austin was a smaller area versus Fort Worth, Dallas, which was, oh my God, they, it would have been too big. Okay. So for my family's sake, I knew I had to be here. So I didn't know one human being. So I'm an esthetician. I am. I'm licensed along the way. I did my time, so to speak, and got my license. But I took a one room studio in a hair salon in Georgetown, Texas, and didn't even live here. And would drive here when I wasn't traveling for shows and things and started building a base of business and then moved the spa up to this historic Georgetown Square in 2005. Here you are. Okay. The queen, the queen icon herself of skincare. Let's just call it what it is. Mm -hmm. And you come here and nobody knows you. And you had to build up a business. You had to build up a clientele. Did anyone have any idea who you, no, because you, I was going to say, did anybody have any idea the magnitude of who you were? And the answer is no, because nobody knew you. No, no. That's crazy. No, but what I would take from that for your guests is to understand you have to start. Mm. Yes, I had the skill set. Yes, I did. You know, I called because Georgetown was, you know, teeny weeny. It was 20,000 people then. Now it's over 100,000 and growing. But the point is that um, I just I called different salons that most of them were just Betty Boop little places. I couldn't I didn't want to go there. So there were a couple that had some elegance to them. Mm -hmm. And I called and just I didn't identify. No, because my products were sold through a Redken distributor here in the Austin market. And they were a Redken salon. So I didn't want to identify myself at first. And I said, uh, do you have a room to lease? And the gentleman, the uh, husband said, yes, we just remodeled and we uh, have a facial room now. So that was perfect because I didn't have to invest in a bed, a steamer, a magnifier. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, you know, so I just kind of slid in. And when um, I started uh, Valentine's Day, 2004, I signed a one year lease with them. And I said, it was Rachel and company. I said, Rachel, can I, um, uh, she was having something for Valentine's. And I said, could I set up a, a hand peel station? And she, she had no idea what I meant. But I said, could I use one of your rollabouts? And she goes, sure. So I sat up and I would go up to women and say, may I do one, a, a hand pill for you? Hello, I'm Megan. And, and so they were like, sure. Complimentary. Yes, complimentary. And so from there, I started building the base of my business. But the other thing I did, guys, is start small and go big and do it quick and yeah, know yeah, it. So quick. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so... At that moment, I started advertising in the local paper, Novita Spa at Rachel and Company. Rachel and Company is very small. And so I was starting to brand it. And then when I came up, because ultimately I wanted to be on the historic square. Okay. 
where you know it was beautiful and all of that and where the basic walking thoroughfare and all that so um you start start small start though you got to start and then you know but you have to scale fast because then you get caught up in being too small and it just doesn't build so it's it's important to pay attention to your vision your mission because and your you know your values but your vision and mission and stay with those but you have to grow them that's that start and scale start small but scale fast and then the branding also and the branding a lot a lot of our listeners they are so and so with another company right yes. and yes. so for me what i'm hearing is it's not about Jessica Stroud it's about the lady ceo and why i liked it while i like to put my name on things people know, almost know me more as the lady CEO. And it's almost like, that's the brand I should really be like, this just, I'm learning so much. Right. It's like, that's why I started this podcast. So I can learn a whole bunch. Right. And then my, my friends just get to listen. So now it's like, okay, I got to build the brand, the brand, the brand. And And that's true because what you just said there. Um, so, so what let's for your listeners. So here I now have this, um, and when we, when I brought it up to the uh, historic square, I actually put the first Novitas Spa on the square inside a beautiful home furnishing interior design store. Very, so they, and they, were, and they were growing and they approached me actually, because okay. the, the, I was a husband is a husband and wife, and they had a smaller store on the square, but they had the opportunity to come into this really five times larger. And they knew my, she became a client of mine and she knew my vision of being on the square. So it helped defray some of their costs. So I assigned a two year lease with them. And so that got me up on the square. And at that point, what you just said, I started not only branding Novita, but I started branding myself, you know, as that, because I also, and this is another very important piece. I I have a, a new client a consulting client and basically too many entrepreneurs create, they might leave their nine to five, but they create another job for themselves. Oh, boom. You left a nine to five and you just got yourself a job. Right. Okay. So I was very clear that I was going to take the lab coat off the Novita, you know, or my scrubs that I built Rachel and company. Yes, I did. Or the base of Novita but I was gonna take it off and then train the staff and have them, because the team is so vital. Hmm. And I mean, and you can be a, a solopreneur, you can be an intrapreneur, but you have to know that it's that team. It's not just one person. You build a team and the team will build your business. So it's very important to-, to oh, Hang on, I'm writing that down. Mm-hmm. Build a team, team. everyone and build a team and the, the team, team will build your business. Okay. And, I, and I have been doing that since Tupperware. I, uh, I learned, I had an epiphany back in the day and that was in 1976 uh, that you, it's about building that team. It's about building people and they will build your business. And so with that, one thing that I will share too, is until we get to point two of your questions, which will go to three, uh, is that I'm, I'm just going to use her name, Gigi Spencer. Gigi Spencer, when I came to the Austin market, I didn't know anyone. So when I was coming up to the uh, square and I knew that I was going to take the lab coat off, yes, uh, I went to the schools in the Austin market and recruited the valedictorians. So recruiting the cream. Nice. And I met Gigi Spencer there in 2005. And she was just finishing her aesthetic license. She had her nail license already. And she has worked with me all these years. Wow. That is unheard of in the spa aesthetic industry. The turnover is huge. Build the team and the team will build your business. Key, 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 key. Hmm. So from so from the um, 
uh, Novitas Bond the Square inside Diva, which is the home furnishing business. I then uh, took a building two doors down, 4,000 square feet, and remodeled this whole beautiful um, shell of a building, which was a historic building, but the interior was a white box, and created Novita Spa, and then evolved it to Novita Spa and Medical Rejuvenation Clinic. So again, it's that it's, it really goes back to start small, scale fast. So you have to pay attention to the market and what the market is asking for. So meaning that in I was my business plan always had in it to do medical services, you know, uh, injections and laser and so forth. But then the recession happened and Georgetown was too small and the recession of like eight and nine, 10. Yes. Uh -huh. yep. And it wasn't the time to do it. It wasn't. So okay. it's time to just stabilize it. Okay. But, but the other piece, now I'll share number two. Okay. Um, in 2006, I met Paul Matthew Tyler. And I met him at church and he was from Michigan. He was visiting friends and he was a delightful person, but um, he came and went because he technically lived in Michigan. He was a, a retired engineer in the auto industry. And when he would come back, he'd say, let's have brunch, you know, after church and all that. So, I mean, I just viewed it as hanging out with Paul Tyler. He viewed it as he was uh, seeing me, so to speak, I guess. Oh, okay. okay. Men okay. and women, different opinions. I mean, oh, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Because the first time was so horrible that oh. I said, I'm never going to do that again, you know? So I had committed all those years, ladies and gentlemen, to bringing up my children and building these businesses and friends in life, but uh, that piece was not of interest to me, not. So when I met Paul, I just, you know, I enjoyed his company, but I was not interested in that. But over time, I saw that through, through really the Holy Spirit, not me, that it was something that really I should pay attention to. And so Paul Tyler and I married December 9th, 2006. And it was a great experience for me. Um, he truly got me. He understood what I, everything I've just shared. And he admired me and he uh, encouraged me. Mm -hmm. And he, like your husband does with you. Yeah. And I mean, we'd go up to the lab in Dallas and we'd, he knew more about chemistry than I ever will because his uh, uh, forte was lubricants. Lubricants, well, that's chemistry sure. in the auto industry. And so- but we would get, but he would make sure that I, you know, had the spotlight and we get in the car and he go, good job, honey, you know? Aww. So he was always really encouraging me and supporting me. But then December of 2009, he had a stroke and it threw him into a, a, a disease condition, which would have happened anyway, but Lewy body syndrome, which is a Parkinson's form of dementia. So we entered a two and a half year nightmare. And only by the grace of God did Novita Spa exist after that, during that season and after. Um, and Gigi was there, yes, but it was a rough, rough, rocky road. And, um, and Paul Tyler loved me and loved life and did not want to leave this planet. He was 6'2", and at the end was about 80 pounds. And, um, but the night before he passed in the morning, because he really needed to go home. Yeah. And I got into the hospital bed, which was in our dining room, and I started playing, uh, I can only imagine by the mercy me, uh, just again and again and again. There was a boom box and I kept playing it and talking to him. And finally he let go um, somewhere. It was, very, it was still dark, but um, probably two, three, four in the morning. And I tried to sleep a little bit, but I couldn't. And I went into the kitchen the day was dawning and in the backyard, as it was getting lighter, the backyard was full of white butterflies, full, not a few, full. And I knew I hadn't died. I knew I hadn't passed, but I mean, what I had not slept for a couple of days and I knew I was exhausted. And I just put my head down on the kitchen table and started praying and saying, Lord, what are you saying to me? And I raised my head and I ought, I've only had this experience a few times, but I heard, share your story. 
And then I sat there and I said, share my story. What story? Tonight? My life story? Paul's illness? What story? God doesn't answer those story, those questions. You're like, which one? <laughs> doesn't answer those questions. We want to know the meat, you know, yeah. but he doesn't. And so from there, I had a lot of fish to fry, as I said, to get back into the spa full time and uh, let go of a couple of people that were not really doing their job and things of that nature. And then Gigi and I in 12 said, okay, it's time to do medical. We got our licensing. We hired a, I hired a medical director and we put the medical component to the business together and kept growing the business. And so um, it, but never left me, Jessica, share my story. Right. Because when you're in the trenches, as you know, and our listeners know, you get, you lose the forest for the trees. And, um, but I never, it never left me. And I kept journaling and kept thinking about it and praying about it. And that was 2012? Well, he passed in 11, 10 years ago yesterday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 2011 was when you heard. Yes. When God said to you, share your story. Yes. 2011. Okay. Yes. And you're like, okay, now I got to get back to my business. Yes, exactly. Yes. So um, in 17, though, I wrote an outline. And it had a it had a title, sort of, kind of, mm -hmm. hope and possibilities, just over the horizon. And but then I put it over there, didn't write it, did the outline, and um, and then in nineteen, I was working on a virtual course because mm -hmm. virtual courses had started, and I started a, writing a virtual course for the spa industry. Okay, and Still I got staying within our business still staying with the core of the biz. And I got this crushing, you're not doing what I said to do. Nuh -uh. And I had hired a coach to kind of keep me focused, you know, working with me on that. And I said her name and I said, I called her and I said, we can't do this. <laughs> and she's like, but you hired me to make, right. help you do it. Yeah. Right. So I said, but you can oversee this. You know, I have to finish this. I have to do this. I have to do this. And so I did. And in um, December, I finished it. And in December of 2019, a person who knew what they were doing, put it up on Amazon. And he guided me uh, with the post, you know, marketing of it, of uh, launching it. And on January 4th, 2020, it went to number one in three categories on Amazon. Yeah. But what the piece that I didn't have at the, in 17, which came to me in uh, 19, as I'm writing it, was it's never too early or too late to create the life of your dreams. Mm. And that's so appropriate and applicable to people today going through so many transitions. I'm 50. I've hated my job for years, but I mean, am I, is it too late? But what am I going to do? What else am I going to do? Like I went through that when I was 30, but this has been my identity for 10 years. What else am I going to do? What are you, you're only 30. You're going to live hopefully 60 more years. Exactly. exactly, exactly. So that came to me in 19, right? As I was writing it. So it, it has been the foundation of what, and that's so your third question is today. So yeah, so I, I want guys as, as much business and as much success and as many lessons as Megan has had along the way. And with the, the beautiful journey that she had with her husband and writing her book, becoming a number one best-selling author, she's not done. She's not done. And so I specifically, I said, all right, here's the third bullet point. Like what's next? I need you to tell us what's next because I know that my audience will be so inspired by it and, and ask themselves, okay, well, what's next for me? Right. Right. What's the next chapter in all of this? And it's going within, but it's understanding. Again, it goes back to when I was you know, five years old, well, not five, seven years old and doing the plays, I was the one that said, okay, you're going to be Jesus, you'll be Mary, okay, you know, and creating the costumes from my mother's sheets and things, meaning that, so if I don't do that, I can't breathe. If I don't create, but if I don't help others, 
it's pointless. There is no point. So it all really ties together with that. You know, as Zig Ziglar said, and I'm not going to quote it properly, but, you know, if you give to enough, you will be given to. And so uh, I don't operate my life from intention of that, but it's in my heart. So, but the piece that I do have to share with the, what's next is then um, COVID. And so um, no one has been immune to this COVID stuff. And I, listen, I'm not talking about I'm talking about the fallout from COVID. I'm not it's, talking about the actual virus. I'm no, talking exactly. about business owners have exactly. all been affected. I don't care what business you're in. And that's that's exactly what Megan's talking about. Right. How it, her business was affected. Well, the thing about it though, I backtrack a teeny bit. In 2018, I um, injured my knee for the last time and I needed a knee replacement, but I did not want a knee replacement because the statistics are not great. So I have been, again, I've been a product developer now for 30 or you know, 25 years or whatever it was. And so I just started researching. I'm a researcher. I learned that in the Alcon days. And uh, I just started doing a lot of research. And so I ended up having one cc of umbilical cord stem cell in my left knee. Mm -hmm. And to this day, I have a new knee. And it's going on in November, three years. And so I could go in very heavily into nope, that. I've got but, this, I got stem cell injections specifically into my knees. It's been about a year ago, mm -hmm. been about a year ago. One of the best decisions you made, I'm sure. Yep, exactly. Yep. So I said to myself, self, because anyone that saw me said, this lady should have a walker, you know, but I didn't. Um, so obviously then I all of a sudden can walk. Well, what, and I didn't have surgery. I didn't have pro, you know, pre-op, post-op, nothing. And so I said to myself, I need to bring this to Novita. Always something new. That's my promise. Start small, scale fast. So I started doing research of affiliate programs. That's where I started. And I found R3 stem cell, Dr. David Green, pioneer in regenerative stem cell therapy. And he had an affiliate program. I joined forces with them in January of 19. And um, we did a lot of business out of Novita in 19. Okay. This is before the pandemic was even thought about. Mm -hmm. Now, in this January, I mean, December, I published that book. You know, all the stories. But I said to myself in the end of 19 that, and I was approaching a, a big milestone birthday, but it's not that it was that number. Because remember Ray, Papa there, he didn't give hang up the, uh, you know, briefcase until his uh, mid to latter 80s, you know. So <clears throat> I just said, you know, this is, I love doing something that helps people. So I was thinking maybe it's time to evolve the spa one more time to more of a stem cell, you know, get a hyperbaric chamber. And that we already had an infrared sauna. We already had a European style sauna, beautiful. So grow it that way more so, okay? So it was already in my marketing planning brain already. So when the, uh, uh, the governor and the Nash and then federal, you could see this lockdown going to happen. Uh, I said to my, we had a staff meeting. I knew I had to keep very engaged with them. I didn't know they were going to get PPP money or whatever, you know, very responsible for them. And so I said, let's do a Zoom a couple of times a week. Let's continue, you know, doing interesting things. Maybe we'll do Zoom together and, you know, or a, a live rather, you know, that type of thing. So that was the last, that was March 21st, okay? Saturday, March 21st. After they all left, I sat there and I just started talking to God and I said, okay, now what's next? Mm -hmm. And I heard, don't go dark. Okay. So I did my morning routine, got dressed, probably wore the same thing every day for you know two months, black turtleneck and black jeans, went down there. Now, remember, we have a shopping cart internet. That's right. Yeah, you do direct to consumer. And so I had in preparation for this closure, which we were told, oh, through April 15th, I brought in more inventory than normal to the spa. The, of course, the warehouse closed, but FedEx was open. So as long as FedEx was open, I was the shipper. You could so, make it happen. Make it happen. Okay, wait, 
So here you are, you hear, don't go dark. Mm -hmm. And how you translate that is just do your stuff every day. Every day. Wake up. What can I do today? What can I do today? And so here you are in your spa. Mm -hmm. um, you're doing Facebook lives. You're interacting with people. You're um, still teaching them what they can do just in a different level. And even at, even at your existence of success, you are packing and shipping the product. Now, mind you, I put it in little, uh, you know, boxes or bags or whatever it was and brought it to FedEx and they packed it up. But regardless, yes, I did. Yes. You were processing the orders. That is correct. And my, you know, my processing gal out of her, meaning who did the uh, invoicing and stuff. Uh, yes. I mean, we just worked internally. And that is when my podcast was birthed, Unique Leaders Live, during that season. Um, and how that started was basically everything you just said. But uh, I've all, I, maybe the last three years prior to that, I had started Motivation Monday and Totally You Tuesday and Facebook giveaways and, you know, just everything that people did. And um, so you can go to YouTube and see the archived, you know, Motivation Mondays and the like. But during the Easter weekend of 2020, uh, a friend of mine who um, uh, I just saw on Facebook and she's talking about doing a directory for alternative medical uh, practitioners. So I messaged her. I said, oh, would you like to come on? I'll interview you. And she goes, sure. Because we're now playing around with StreamYard. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to use it and see how it worked. And it was fascinating because people watched it. Well, everyone was home. Yes. So, you know, and so they I said, wow, this is interesting. So then I would ask this one locally and this one locally. It's, it wasn't called Unique Leaders yet. It was called Hope and Possibilities, the title of the book. But, but it was about the guest just like what we're doing here. So people enjoyed it. And then as time went on, I said, you know, this needs to um, really get a little um, marketing behind it, you know, a little bit more, we get out of local, reach out to people and, um, and also um, explore the podcasting world, which I didn't know anything about, zero. So I start, you know, I'm, I, I'm an inquisitive person as you are. And I just keep asking questions. You know, how do you do a podcast? What do you do? How do you do it? What's and, that all about? Right, right. And yeah. so started that. So, so, but that's the backstory of that. On March 20, uh, 31st, 10 days later, this man comes to the door. I'm about to leave. We had just done a live of some sort and I was getting ready to leave. And he came to the door. It was locked. Uh, opened it. I said, may I help you? And I thought he was going to buy a gift card because, you know, birthdays and anniversaries still went on during that season, even though they could have done it online. And we did a lot of that too, but he knocked on the door, opened it up and he identified himself. And he said, would you uh, be interested in selling me your business? <laughs> Pardon me? Uh -huh. uh, I just did a live. So I don't know if you know me, I'm Facebook famous. <laughs> Pardon me? And so says, I, do you hmm. want to sell your business? So the first thought I had though was hmm, six feet away. Okay. Well, how about six feet over there and six feet over there? So he came in and we started talking and um, I ended up selling him what's called an asset purchase, not the trade name, Novitaspa, not the product it's sitting in the warehouse, the inventory, not the website URL and the shopping cart. So he wasn't interested in that, really. And he didn't really understand what he had. He, it's a long story, what, who he is and what he is trying to do. But, but the point is that um, I, it's an asset. And, I wasn't in, and he wouldn't have paid me for what it really was worth. So um, he really just wanted that location on the square. He wanted the expensive equipment, the client, uh, the client base, and the worker bees. That is what he was interested in interesting yeah he getting didn't into, want the intellectual property yeah he he wanted to get into georgetown is what he wanted to do and we were the number one spa in in not just georgetown but in the general area too so similar yeah. to um a dentist buying another dental practice you're buying right. the location you're buying the equipment right you're buying the clientele right you're buying the staff exactly exactly right. 
So uh, we closed June 2nd, 2020. But we, um, so remember we were closed from March 21st till May 18th. Okay. But Megan was the shipper and doing all of that mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And then creating unique leaders and the like. So we closed on June 2nd and I did consult with him until the holiday, through the holidays. And, and then I put my, so now this is what you said, what's next? Mm -hmm. So I'd done the foundation, but what I did was uh, during the lockdown also, my graphic artist and I created a new website, not just the Nobitas site, which was the spa site, but at megandimartino.com. So a new URL. And, we, and I said to Elizabeth, my graphic gal, I wanna put the book still available on um, Amazon, but I said, I wanna give people hope. And so, and my little story here. And uh, so you can today go to megandimartino.com and put in hope and uh, get the ebook at no charge. Mm, I love that. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. So well, only another author like yourself will understand we don't write books to get rich. We don't write books to make money. You write a book to change people's it's a marketing piece. Yes. yes, yes. But it's right. also you also um, it's to change people's lives. Yes, very much so, Jessica, very much so. And and the and looking back on it as well, I'm talking about the message. Uh, September 30th or 29th going into 30, 2011, you know, share your story. It's also about for yourself, I feel that it helps you crystallize because like you said earlier, you do so many things and you, it just becomes second nature and it helps you crystallize really what you've done in life and how you can help others. So it, it's a tool as well. Yeah. You're going to write another book? Uh, I think so. Yes. Yeah. I, 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 but I'm listening. I'm not, I'm, I'm always listening to the Holy Spirit, but I'm listening to what other people are saying, you know, asking of me for me. So there's, there's something brewing. I can see it. Yes. Yeah. There'll be something else. Yes. Yes. Same for me. There are people like, well, I want to know about this. I want to know about that. And what happened with this and what happened that? And I'm like, Oh, that's in the second book. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just, oh wait, there's going to be another lady CEO book. <laughs> it's a second edition. And it, because you know why, because we're all folks, listen to this. We're all evolving. Absolutely. You're never going to stop. You're never, unless you choose to do that. Unless you, you know, they say about failure and I've had many, but it, failure is basically just a seed to a greater, um, you know, a setup for a set a comeback, but also greater, uh, you know, that seed for greater opportunity. So it's just, I look at it and I don't even look at the word failure. I mean, I can look at things saying, oh, gee, I wish I had done things differently, like not selling as much stock to X, Y, Z, you know, but however, it, no, wait, no, no, we're not, we're not going to say that. Mm -hmm. Because everything that we have done has brought us here. Absolutely. That's we what I'm wouldn't, saying. We yes. wouldn't change here for anything. Amen. You, the, the valuable, so many valuable lessons came oh, from that. Yes, yes, and yes. So when you came back to do it a second time, you were so much smarter. Absolutely, absolutely. And I said it that way purposely for mm -hmm. our, our listeners, our viewers, because I, I want people to understand that it's just that seed for greater things to come. And you absolutely. use those as understanding for the next step. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, and, and, and so many times, like you just said with failure, it's like, oh, it's like, no, 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 no. What did, what did you learn from that? Exactly. Right. When, mm -hmm. when you, when we were, well, we were babies, right. We first started walking, we fell down. Okay. We learned some things and then we got back up again. So why do we look at falling down or a failure is a bad thing? It just, anyway, it drives me crazy. That's, that's my soapbox. It drives me crazy. <laughs> and, well, you can absolutely see, and I'm saying not specifically just to you, but anyone listening is I, I net, didn't ascribe to that either. Even the going dark, right? I didn't sit on the couch and uh, watch Netflix. I just kept going. So uh, I ascribe to keep going, start and don't stop. Doesn't mean your things will uh, look differently. So meaning at this point in my life, had the um, change of the world not happen, I, my goal was and I'm not saying it has changed, but I would like to be able to do all this electronic work that I'm doing and being in Italy, 
you know? Oh, it, yes. You know what I mean? Uh, so I don't know if at this moment that's going to happen, but obviously it's not time. And I don't mean just because of, you know, the, uh, the world, but I'm just saying I have a lot to do, you know? So really what I'm doing now, and it's an interesting thing because um, like you said, initially, um, you know, I still have the product line. We redid this. Uh, so since January, we've redone the website. Obviously, it's not a spa site anymore. I'm talking about Novita Spa. Right, right. And so it's, it's a shopping site, okay. an information site. Uh, but you can also now, we've changed this or added this, you can buy professional pricing as well. So Ooh. not just retail, yes. So we added that feature. And so if, again, you can go and just go on, DM me on Instagram and say, because uh, I'm creating what's called the Spa in a Box training. Because I recognize, and this is since I spoke with you, um, because what has happened on Clubhouse is I see dramatically, I've known this, but now I have a one-on-one -on -one kind of relationship with listening to people. Um, and there's a horrible statistic in the United States, and it's national. 95% of all newly licensed estheticians, again, this is national, 95, that means almost everyone in five years is not working as an esthetician in the United States. Interesting. Yes. I had no idea. Yes. And, the, and, the, and the reason is the education is so horrible and it doesn't matter what state or school you go to because the same board that I took in 1991 is the same board they're taking here today. Okay. So that hasn't changed, but the demand and need of the consumer and the opportunity of what's out there has changed drastically. The second piece to that, though, is there's no place for people to be mentored. Most, you walk into a salon, you don't realize this, but even the aesthetic room to the hair styling chair is leased. The owner of those businesses have become real estate people. Right. Okay. They have not become, they, they are not trainers or mentors or business consultants. Correct. They Correct. are renting the chair. Manager, managers of the space. Yes. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, so therefore the individual who gets out of school has nowhere to really work. They have delusions of grandeur. They may, you know, spend another 10 grand in furnishing that room, but that, you know, the, it's not the field of dreams. They don't have the skill set either to do what I did at Rachel and company. Most of them don't. Yeah. So they get frustrated. They end up just waxing and they give up and get a job job. So it's, it's really horrible. Mm -hmm. And that is what has really motivated me all these, these years. This, this, this has not changed by the way, but <clears throat> meaning during the latter nineties is when this lease thing started. And it's really motivated me to um, help. And that's why I was going to do the course as I shared earlier in, in 19. And so now it's time to do that, Jessica, it's time. But Clubhouse has um, illuminated myself to a lot of people. And now I have actually coaching clients one-on-one, -on -one, but I'm also working on doing a mastermind and uh, you know to really get to know people. But like you said earlier, it's not just going to be spa and aesthetics. It's anyone wanting to start a business mm -hmm. because the principles are the same. They really are. Meaning when I said, build a team and the team will build your business. That is not applicable just to a spa. Mm. That's any business. Absolutely. Any business. So, um, so I'm really re, you know, or not reorganizing, but taking the, the foundation and then continuing on. So obviously there's going to be <coughs> notes in the comments and all that. <clears throat> and yes, I have all of Megan's links and they will be everywhere. But she mentioned, reach out to her on Instagram. She's very, um, very active over on Instagram. She's very active on Clubhouse. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. She's on Facebook. She has a website. Go and, well, I'm one that likes to have a paper copy of a book or, you know, hard copy and the, the PDF and listen to it and all that. So go to megandimartino.com use the code word hope and download the free PDF version of the book mm -hmm. and then go to Amazon and buy the book. 
Absolutely. And soon, I'm talking about next week, the audio book will be available on uh, MeganDiMartino.com. Oh, I just I just recorded it. So it's oh, oh good for you. Yeah, I just recorded it. So that'll be available. Um, but my guys say, you know, hey, this is easy now. You know, you did the hard part. So uh, it, it will be. And if anyone is interested in, um, I'm going to use this term, a spa in a box, spa training, put in spa. And if so, and just, you know, in Instagram, just DM me spa. And if someone is interested in purchasing product, go over to novitaspa.com. Okay. Okay. So if you are anywhere in the esthetician cosmetology spa right. area, you absolutely need to, A, you need to private message Megan to see how she can help you not be a statistic. Exactly, Jessica. And she has so many resources for you. So now that everyone knows how to connect with you, you have been fabulous. And I have really, really enjoyed this. So the opportunity to share my heart. Absolutely. Thank you, dear. You did fabulous. And now I'm all jazzed up about Clubhouse. Like, oh my gosh, I got to get back over on Clubhouse. So um, everyone, ladies, CEOs, thank you. And guys, CEOs too. I got to figure out a better way to say that. But all of my CEO tribe, thank you so much for joining us again today. And um, I don't say all the interviews are my favorite, but I knew, I knew, I knew this one with Megan was going to be extra special. So, all right, Megan, say goodbye to everybody. Well, folks, thank you so much for joining Jessica and I today and sharing in our stories and our lives. And we are both here for you to help you create your best life. Thank you so much. Hey, we'll talk to you next time, everybody. Thank you. Bye.